Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Stellar Development Foundation's third quarterly call of 2021. I'm Carolyn Yee, Communications Manager at SDF, and I will be your host as we take you through what we've been up to since Q2. So today we'll hear from three of SDF's leaders, CEO and Executive Director Donnell Dixon, Chief Marketing Officer Jordan Edelstein, and Vice President of Ecosystem Justin Rice. We're also joined by a very special guest, Shivani Saroya, CEO and co-founder of Tala, and Danelle and Shivani will share more about why momentarily. On the agenda for today, first, Danelle will share a reminder of our 2021 roadmap. She'll also be joined by Shivani to speak to the importance of fostering sustainable use cases. Next, Justin will cover what we've done to ensure the robustness and usability of Stellar, sharing an overview of our Q3 growth metrics and our technical work. And finally, Jordan will close with what we're doing to be the blockchain people know and trust through our marketing and communications efforts, as well as our policy and regulatory engagement. We'll also have time at the end for Q&A, so please feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation into the Q&A tab on your toolbar. And with that, I will hand it over to Danelle. Thank you, Carolyn. And thanks so much for all of you for being here. There have been so many exciting developments this quarter and we can't wait to dig in. So first, you've heard me say this before many times, but I wanted to remind you of the three pillars that we published in our 2021 roadmap. These are the same that we created in 2019 as well. These help guide our work and hold us accountable. Uh, it's this framework that we use to share our progress with you quarterly. And these three pillars are ensuring the robustness and usability of Stellar, helping Stellar be the blockchain people know and trust, and fostering sustainable use cases for Stellar. Together, these guide us on the path of addressing SDF's vision of creating equitable access to the global financial system. So let's get started. Uh, I wanted to share some big progress on fostering sustainable use cases on Stellar. First, let's talk about last week's announcement with MoneyGram. Though technically this happened in Q4, not Q3, I'd be remiss not to mention it today. The news is that MoneyGram and SDF are teaming up to utilize blockchain technology to reach even more users on a global basis. Together, we're creating this bridge between digital assets and local currencies for, for consumers. We're introducing cash in and cash out capabilities that previously did not exist. This is so exciting for us. Digital wallets connected to the Stellar network will be able to access a new cash in and cash out option via MoneyGram, international retail platform. This will also mean introducing a new segment of cash users to the choice to convert their cash into and out of USDC. It gives them access to fast and affordable digital asset services that they may not have considered before. This relationship and this offering gets to the core of what we talk about when it comes to fostering sustainable use cases. It's all dem demonstrative of SDF's commitment to advancing interoperability in innovative ways, bringing together the reach of MoneyGram services, the speed of the Stellar Network and USDC will create new value and new choices for users. This is, is a transformative development on the path to increasing access and seeing more mainstream adoption of digital asset services. At this very moment, SDF and MoneyGram teams are working hard to behind the scenes, bringing this offering to life. So more on this work to come next quarter. So in Q3, we've made a total of two enterprise fund investments. First, SDF invested $750,000 in Rehive, a South African company that provides custom branded payment solutions that leverage stable coins and digital assets. They've been building on Stellar since 2017, and their top use case is enabling payouts for customers. And we're really happy to announce today that SDF has contributed $40 million to a $145 million Series E round in Tala, a mission-driven digital financial services company. So now, that's, now that the news is out, I'd like to give a really warm welcome to Shivani Soroya, Tala's CEO and co-founder. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, before I hand it over to Shivani to introduce herself, I'd like to, I'd like to share what we, could, what we continue to foster expanded use cases of the Stellar Network. We do so with our mission in mind, to create equitable access to the global financial infrastructure. And with our collective focus 
on bringing financial tools and products to more people all around the globe, there is a deep mission alignment between SDF and Tala. This Tala investment is our largest to date since launching the Enterprise Fund in 2020. This investment means supporting a mission aligned company to harness the power of blockchain and stable coins, expanding access to financial services for people who need it the most. It also means growing the Stellar's network geographic reach to millions of Tala's users. The goal that SDF and Stellar have always focused on is making the movement of money simple and affordable. And as Jed has always said, money should move just like email and Tala and SDF are both focused on getting that goal covered. So Shivani, thanks so much for joining us. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about Tala? Sure. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, I am so excited to be here and so excited to be partnering with Stellar um, to be able to really accelerate Tala's vision to enable financial agency. Um, so as Danelle said, I'm Shivani and I'm the CEO and founder at Tala. Uh, and we've been doing this for the last six years plus at this point. Um, I'll just share a little bit about my background so you can get to know me and, and why we started as a company. So my background uh, worked across nine different countries across West Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as India. Um, and what I really did was understand the pain points and aspirations of the underserved at a very micro level. So over four and a half years, I interviewed a little over 3,500 individuals across these different countries um, and literally got to go to their homes in the morning, go to work with them and understand how much money they made, how they ran their businesses, where they spent that money, how they prioritize what bills to pay, got to see firsthand you know, them being turned away by financial institutions, even though they had purchasing power and ran successful businesses. I then went back home with them and also saw how they thought about hard money, how they thought about soft money or liquid money, um, and really could understand that this was a tremendous amount of potential, as Danelle mentioned, that's just sitting. And the financial services industry, the traditional institutions, are not looking to serve this customer. And this is really why Tala started, is realizing the potential that existed, but also realizing the power that technology could have in terms of rethinking our supply chains and the platforms that we can build to really enable that financial agency. And so uh, over the last six years, we've now uh, taken our first product, which was access to capital uh, through an Android application to four countries. So we currently work in Kenya, the Philippines, Mexico, and India. We've delivered credit access to over 6 million customers across these four markets. Uh, in terms of origination to date, we've delivered over 2.7 billion in capital access to these customers. And what we're really excited to do, and we saw COVID actually accelerate this trend for us, is really now go beyond just credit access and to provide our customers with a safe place to keep their money, a place to be able to grow their money and think about, again, investments and working capital products. And then lastly, to really be able to help them in using that money much more efficiently and cost effectively. Thank you. I mean, one of the things that I always say is that this financial system that we work with today is built for the few and not for the many. And I love what you guys have been doing, focusing on the many and bringing these services to the many. So uh, thank you for all of the work that you've done to date on that. So what needs did you see in front of you heading into this funding round? So I think it really goes back to really needing partners to work with that could accelerate that roadmap and really thinking about the cross-border movement of money, thinking about ways that we can essentially, uh, I would say, not build everything ourselves, but rather think about our infrastructure as a set of composition blocks and thinking about how can we leverage um, companies and other service providers that are also serving this market and this segment. And so when we think about the kind of features that we want to enable for our customers, whether that's receiving remittances into our Tala account or thinking about the usability of currency for bill payments, for peer-to-peer, -peer, um, or if we think about even the savings products and the kind of yield that we want to provide to them, what we're seeing actually within 
essentially like a lot of crypto ecosystems is the fact that there are others that are building this. And we have, again, the, the trust and the relationship with our customers, but we don't necessarily need to build everything ourselves. And so we felt the need to rethink how could we accelerate and leverage um, partnerships to really enable those services. That's so awesome. That's one of my favorite things. It used to be that places that you work when they say, if it's not built here, it's not good enough. And I love that you've embraced the notion of actually there's a lot of tools out there that can be leveraged, including Stellar, for example, to be able to achieve the goals that you want to, that you want to achieve. So what impact will this investment enable your team to make? I think it, it really will enable us to get to that vision. Um, we really believe that ultimately cash is not what our customers need, right? It's not enabling them to, to be seen by the formal financial marketplace. But in addition to that, it's costing them a lot of money. It's time wasted that they're having to then go physically to locations. It's the fact that you know, they're experiencing currency fluctuation and they're losing uh, value there. We're seeing the fact that just as you mentioned before, cashing in and cashing out, there's a cost to that. Um, and then lastly, it's really the fact that they themselves are not able to be in control. And so for us, the impact is all about financial agency. Um, and we're really, what we're really excited to see is the fact that, you know, our customers are hungry for this. Um, and we're seeing that, you know, in some ways they've been designing their own products and now we're just listening and watching them um, and actually thinking about, again, tools that we can leverage and also partners that we can work with. Well, it's one of my favorite things about what you've done in, in terms of building your business. You haven't tried to solve the problems uh, sitting here in the United States. You've actually gone local and have feet on the ground and are problem solving in region with the people that actually know what those problems are and know how to solve them. It is something that I think that we forget is such an important step for growth and for really, really getting to the solutions that are necessary in each of the regions. So uh, this is gonna be a question that folks are gonna ask you across the board. What are your plans for integrating Tala's products into Stellar and what could that look like? I think one of the first things that we're thinking about is really around that safety and that movement of money. And so the first thing that we're thinking about is integrating a crypto wallet within our Tala account. Um, within that, one of the first use cases will really be around remittances because we see this as a clear pain point that we can help solve for our customers. So this is really around one, increasing the efficiency. So the time in which our customers can receive that capital um, and reducing that time. The second piece is really around reducing the, the cost of it. And so what we're seeing is the ability to potentially be able to reduce the cost by almost 50%. And so that's more money in our customers' wallets um, or in their lives, I should say. Uh, and then the last thing is that what we're excited to do is then once that capital is actually in a digital um, account, we can then think about how can we help this customer actually further on ramp um, into the ecosystem and think about how they use stable coins. Um, so can they use that for bill payments? Can they use that to pay back their credit products? Can they send that to other individuals? But the goal really is for us to first find an easier mechanism for them to receive that capital. So awesome. I am so thrilled that you guys are a part of our ecosystem now. Uh, and I think that this is going to be a long and very important relationship that we've created here. So Shivani, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to continue to expand our work together. And it would be great if you could stick around till the end for some audience questions. Um, and for now, I'm going to hand it over to Justin, who's going to talk about how we've been doing on ensuring the robustness and usability of Stellar. Justin. Great. Thanks, Danelle. Um, hi everyone, I'm Justin Rice, SDF's Vice President of Ecosystem, and I'm excited to tell you more about what we've done this quarter to ensure the robustness and usability of Stellar. So to kick that off, let's take a look at some network activity and growth numbers. The Stellar Ledger, it's public record, which means anyone can see what's going on on the network. Um, at SDF, we've been tracking a set of metrics and comparing them year over year to help us figure out if network usage is in fact increasing. And this quarter, I'm happy to share that once again, network usage continues to grow. So let's take a look at the first metric, total accounts. The network is up to over 5.7 million accounts now, which is 23% growth year over year. 
The second metric, total number of payments. In Q3 2021, there were 29.8 million payments compared to 12 million in Q3 of last year. That's 148% growth year over year. Next, let's look at how these accounts and payments are helping to drive volume on Stellar's decentralized exchange. So in Q3 2021, the average daily DEX volume neared 13 million lumens worth per day, which is a big leap from 2020, when the average daily DEX volume was around 5 million lumens worth per day. So more DEX activity, that means more currency conversion is happening. Now, what about raw network activity? So to understand that, we can look at the total operations processed since operations on Stellar are the basic functions that change the ledger. They include things like payments and buy and sell orders. This quarter, the network processed over 643 million operations. That's 200% year over year growth and over 30% growth from last quarter alone. The number is they continue to show an increase in general network usage, and that's great. But SDF's mission is to connect global financial infrastructure. And to get a sense of how that's going, let's examine some metrics that speak directly to that North Star. To do that, we'll turn to what we call relevant assets. So relevant assets are assets that are tethered to real financial instruments. Think of fiat currency like US dollars or Mexican pesos. By homing in on these assets, we can get a clearer sense of how much Stellar is really connecting global financial systems. In Q3, the total volume of relevant assets um, of relevant asset transactions was $232 million worth. Now, there is one noteworthy development that affects that number. Uh, SDF moved $150 million worth of USDC on-chain to support the growth and development of the Stellar network, and we're going to deploy those funds based on our mandate to provide tailored financing to help ecosystem companies when they need it. It's another tool in our toolkit, and we're excited to take advantage of it to help accelerate ecosystem growth. That on-chain USDC accounts for $150 million worth of that $232 million you see here. However, even if you exclude it, there were still $82 million worth of relevant transactions, which is significant year-over-year -year growth. The last set of metrics I'd like to look at today measure the decentralization of the network. So decentralization, it plays a critical role in the health and success of the network. And to assess how we're doing here, we continue to monitor the number of network nodes and validator nodes as well as average ledger close times. So first let's look at the number of tier one validator nodes. These are the nodes that have a high level of network trust and that are essential to network health and resilience. And that number 23, it's consistent with last year. We've also seen a slight increase in total nodes participating in the network from 123 up to 129. Lastly, let's check in on average ledger close time. Um, I'm happy to report that the network continues to close ledgers in a little over five seconds even after taking into account the significant increase in network activity. So the network is handling higher volumes and more transactions with the same consistency and reliability. Now, all those stats are evidence of the network's robustness, but what I'm most excited to talk about today is the progress we've made ensuring the network's usability, specifically how we've collaborated with the ecosystem on the upcoming Protocol 18 upgrade. So this quarter, we've been heads down working on Protocol 18 and helping the ecosystem prepare for the network upgrade vote, which is scheduled for November 3rd. Protocol 18 is the most significant upgrade to Stellar since its inception because it adds a powerful new feature that has the potential to transform the network, the ability to create automated market makers, or AMMs. AMMs allow users to create and deposit into liquidity pools, and on the flip side, they allow buyers and sellers to trade against those pools. They use an underlying formula to value two assets relative to one another, and as trades execute against the pool and alter the amount of each asset it contains, the relative prices shift based on that formula automatically. So when trades execute against a pool, they incur a small fee and the pool collects those fees and distributes them to liquidity providers. And those fees, along with the relative ease of participation, have allowed AMMs on other networks to scale at a very fast pace by effectively crowdsourcing liquidity. Stellar, is the first layer one blockchain to incorporate AMM functionality at the protocol level, and also the first to put AMMs in the middle of cross-border payments. So there's a nice symbiotic relationship there, right? AMMs are good for cross-border payments because they increase liquidity. Cross-border payments are good for AMMs because they bring real-world transactions onto the network. And we believe that protocol 18 can help boost overall network liquidity, which will allow Stellar to do even more to connect the world's financial infrastructure. Um, there's another interesting piece to the story. 
which is that to help accelerate development, SDF collaborated with the ecosystem to ensure that everyone had the tools they need to build products and services that harness AMM functionality well in advance of the network upgrade. So in addition to actively soliciting early feedback, we created a suite of resources for first wave ecosystem developers, including an API spec, a mock API environment, and an early testing environment we called FutureNet. These resources allowed ecosystem devs to spec, build, and test AMM, AMM integrations almost two months in advance of last week's testnet upgrade of protocol 18. Many are preparing product launches to coincide with the November upgrade vote, which means that unlike past protocol rollouts, there will be no delay between network upgrade and feature avail availability. Um, we are super grateful to the ecosystem for their hard work and collaboration, and we're excited to see what happens next. So there will be more updates as we approach the November 3rd Protocol 18 vote. Now, in addition to all the Protocol 18 work, um, we also continue to make progress on developing the standards that allow Stellar to keep moving forward, SEPs and CAPs. As a reminder, Stellar ecosystem proposals, aka SEPs, are specifications that allow ecosystem participants to build extra network infrastructure so they can interoperate easily to facilitate multi-party transactions. Core advancement proposals, aka CAPs, are technical suggestions for changing the protocol itself to expand Stellar's functionality to meet ecosystem needs. Together, they're a good indication not only of where Stellar is now, but also of where it's headed next. This quarter, there were major improvements on both fronts. Let's take a look at a few highlights. So in CEPLAND, we continue to work on standardizing the treatment of pooled accounts, which many wallets and custodians use to map a single Stellar account to multiple internal user accounts to reduce complexity and overhead. At the tail end of last quarter, we standardized a way to represent those accounts. And this quarter, we added pooled account support to the Stellar on-off ramp standards. So now anchors that interoperate with wallets to authorize fiat deposits and withdrawals can easily expand their offerings to products and services that rely on the pooled account model. In addition, we continue to in increase support for the new Request for Quote API, which allows anchors to accept off-chain assets in exchange for different on-chain assets and vice versa. So anchors can now incorporate request for quote fun functionality into standard Stellar transaction flows, which means, for instance, that a user can pay an off-chain ARS to get on-chain USDC. By allowing anchors more flexibility in terms of the assets they accept, these changes can decrease liquidity fragmentation and lead to greater market depth and tighter spreads between trading anchors. In the world of CAPs, we continue to iterate on CAP 21 and CAP 40, which would add transaction preconditions and atomic transaction signature disclosure to the Stellar protocol. Now that may sound obscure, but those caps are actually quite impactful. They paved the way for payment channels and for a payment channel research project we've been working on called Starlight. Starlight is focused on increasing overall payment throughput, throughput to 50K transactions per second and could address specific use cases where enterprises need real-time high through, throughput B2B payment and settlement support. Um, we've already completed an initial payment channels protocol and built an SDK prototype that supports one hop payment channels and we'll continue to work on it and to share more about Starlight soon. Could be a real boon for blockchain scalability. Um, SEPs and CAPs, they come about based on feedback from businesses building on Stellar and evolve in part based on input from the broader Stellar community. And that's where I'd like to end my part of the presentation today with the broader Stellar community. This quarter, um, the Stellar community continued to evolve and grow. Long-time ecosystem participants launched exciting new products and features, including Ultra Stellar's Wallet Connect integration, which makes it easy for users to hop between Stellar interfaces, and Satoshi Pay's prototype of its Layer 2 blockchain, Pendulum. To foster that community and to help nurture the next Ultra Stellar and the next Satoshi Pay, SDF has several ongoing initiatives aimed at supporting new projects and educating and engaging enthusiasts and developers. Some highlights from Q3. We kicked off the quarter sponsoring two virtual hackathons, Hack Africa and DeFi Summer, both of which challenged developers to prototype solutions to real world problems, and both of which saw stellar based projects winning top prizes. We followed those up with our first in person hackathon of the year, Pinnacle, where even though there were a ton of great sponsors, almost 70% of the projects chose to incorporate stellar in some way and to compete for the SDF sponsored prize. The Stellar Community Fund, an ongoing open application grant program that gives the greater Stellar community the opportunity to interact with ecosystem projects, continued its strong run um, this quarter because uh, SEF, which eight, um, which wrapped this quarter, broke the previous application rec record 
and awarded 11 projects a total of almost 3.2 million lumens. To capitalize on that momentum, SCF9 opened applications immediately afterwards and launched a brand new website, and submissions are once again rolling in at a record-breaking clip. Finally, SDF worked with DFS Lab to sponsor a bootcamp focused on supporting the growth and development of blockchain-based businesses in Africa. Over the course of a guided week-long design sprint, nine companies integrated Stellar into a product or service, culminating in a demo day pitch to a group of select investors. Now, I watched these demos and I have to say I was floored. There are so many new projects that are helping Stellar thrive and grow, and in part, that's because more and more people are finding out about Stellar. Let's talk about why that is. I'll pass it over to Jordan, who's going to cover the work that we've been doing to make Stellar the blockchain people know and trust. Jordan? Thanks, Justin. I'm glad to be here with everyone today to talk about what we are doing to make Stellar the blockchain people know and trust. Um, a big part of our marketing, and people have probably heard me talk about this, is always highlighting the efforts of those who build on the network and increasing awareness of Stellar and the ecosystem, which is why over the last few months, we worked with the Vibrant team to prepare a case study video that explores how the Vibrant wallet helps Argentines protect themselves from inflation with USDC. Vibrant is a wallet app developed on Stellar by a team at Sunship Inc., which is a subsidiary of SDF. This is the second video case study we've released this year, which was our commitment in our 2021 roadmap. And I'm pleased to debut the work for you today. Take a look. Stellar has this wide array of assets, low fees, and the easy tooling that's necessary to build an app like Vibrant. Vibrant is a dollar stablecoin wallet based in Brooklyn, New York, that helps people in Argentina protect themselves from inflation. Brooklyn has an incredible crypto and, and fintech community of talents and resources as we're building out this crypto wallet on top of the Stellar blockchain. By building on Stellar as an extension of SDF, Vibrant has been able to implement innovative features, pioneer account recovery, and overall make it easier than ever to integrate with the network. The country of Argentina faces a significant amount of inflation with their local currency, the peso. And our goal is just to help people escape that inflation and protect themselves from devaluation by giving them access to a stablecoin called USDC. Inflation has impacted Argentines for generations, including my family, transforming Argentina into a dollarized country. Last year, in 2020, the inflation in Argentina closed at 36%. And this year, year 2021, it's projected to increase to 48%. This means that the peso can lose its value in a matter of days. This is in part why Argentines use currency exchange, and more specifically, they buy US dollars as a savings instrument. Antes yo ahorraba, pero no llegaba a ningún lado. Era como que no, la plata, acá con el tema de la devaluación, no te, no te sirve ahorrar de la inflación. Y viste que acá guardar pesos es, te lo consume el minuto a minuto, de minuto a minuto esto, y el tema de la inflación no puedes hacer nada. Due to restrictions in Argentina on the purchase of US dollars, Argentines have resorted to buying physical dollars on the street or on the black market and keeping them at home on what's called under the mattress, which is typically a drawer or what you feel is a secure location in your home, but in reality, this poses a great risk. As an app, Vibrant allows you to load value in the form of a Argentine peso stablecoin called ARST, issued by our on and off rent partner in Argentina called Settle. Users then are able to swap that ARST on Stellar's decentralized exchange for USDC and protect themselves from inflation. Stellar's ecosystem standards provide these standardized ways for wallets and for on and off ramps to integrate, as well as perform compliance. We had access to asset issuers like Settle and its ARST token, which allows us to spin up an on and off ramp in Argentina right away. At Vibrant, we've seen some exciting growth. We've seen a 10x improvement in conversion rates and a 60% month over month growth in average balances. When I started managing my debts, a friend recommended me, and I'm very happy that in Vibrant I feel 
protegido de la evaluación y a salvo de todo lo que es la inflación. Lo que más me gusta de Vibram es la capacidad de comprar una moneda equivalente al dólar llamada USDC y dejándola ahí todo el tiempo que quiera y sin preocuparme por la inflación en ningún momento. Siempre quise tener un podcast sobre tecnología y gracias a Vibram empiezo a plasmar ese sueño en la vida real. Being able to buy digital assets on a decentralized blockchain is very appealing. It is a growing trend as safeguard of value, not only in Argentina, but also in Latin America. As we grow, we plan to add in other financial services that are available on the Stellar network, creating more financial inclusion through easier access to this new digital economy. What Vibrant really demonstrates uh, what we at SDF love to see in our ecosystem, which is building solutions to help us achieve our mission of driving financial inclusion. And over the last quarter, the Vibrant team has continued to make really tremendous progress. New users have more than doubled thanks to the team's expanded marketing activities and greater demand for USDC due to rising inflation in Argentina. And then also key in-app metrics have improved as well. We've done a bunch of optimization work on Vibrant's onboarding experience to drive an 18% bump in conversion rates, and the team's focus on growing average balances per user drove an almost 2x increase of that metric. And apart from that, the team continues to work on building exciting new features for users. So video case studies have been just one of the great ways for us to show the world a range of real, real world solutions made possible by Stellar. In this quarter, we also de debuted a couple of written case studies on two stellar built products, RealtyBits and CoinQuest. RealtyBits is a marketplace infrastructure provider for private asset investing. The product gives sponsors a new way to reach new sources of capital beyond traditional markets and gives investors a chance to browse listed offerings and invest. In CoinQuest, which is a former stellar community fund winner, is an all-in-one enterprise payment platform built on stellar. It offers programmable cross-blockchain settlement for merchants. I really encourage you to give these cases a read on Stellar.org. Shifting gears a bit, Q3 was also a particularly busy quarter for blockchain policy news, and SDF participated in that discussion in the media during the ongoing U.S. regulatory debate. Danelle appeared on Bloomberg Radio to comment on cryptocurrency implications of potential infrastructure legislation in the United States, and also penned an op-ed in Cointelegraph to, to argue the often overlooked point that blockchain is infrastructure. Seth Hurtline, our head of government and policy relations, was also interviewed on payments on the US regulatory outlook for blockchain. On the announcement front, Asian cryptocurrency exchange Liquid's announcement that it was making Stellar USDC available to customers was covered by outlets such as Blockworks, while Cointelegraph covered news that the Spanish startup Batoon will integrate their intra-company payment platform on Stellar as a part of the Spanish regulatory sandbox. We've been keeping the momentum going with events as well heading into the fall. Our director of partner engineering, Tomer Weller, made an appearance on Re at Reimagine 2021, and Justin spoke on a panel uh, about closing the financial inclusion gap as a part of the Global Blockchain Business Council's Blockchain Central which was organized alongside the UN General Assembly. Speaking of events, we have been busy planning our own. So we invite you to join us at our third annual Meridian Conference, which is taking place virtually on November 17th and 18th. Our theme this year, to speak to what Danelle was talking to earlier, was build locally, impact globally. The first round of speaker and session updates are up on the Meridian website, which is at meridian.stellar.org. There'll be sessions and debates highlighting expertise from within and beyond the Stellar ecosystem. You also have front row seat to on-demand tech talks, a selection of community submitted product demos, and have the chance to participate in the first ever doc sprint at Meridian. We'll have more updates coming as we approach over the next month. It's free for everyone, so make sure you register to join us. Last, but definitely not least, we've been out there making the case for Stellar for CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, have been top of mind for central banks, a ton written on it recently. We see an opportunity to help people gain access to financial services, but also want to assess the risk in adopting CBDC technology. We did a lot last quarter to make sure decision makers and the industry understand why Stellar is a great platform for the issuing of CBDCs. We recently put out our Stellar for CBDCs white paper, which covers the relevant features that make Stellar particularly well-suited for them. So it's 
It gets into how to execute a CBDC on Stellar and a primer on the Stellar Consensus Protocol, which is obviously the engine that drives our network. SDF's policy team continued to, continued to support the development of CBDC solutions by participating in numerous conferences, panels, sandboxes, and testing of CBDC tools. Together with BIT, we were selected as a finalist for the Global CBDC Challenge held by the Monetary Authority of Singapore to develop and showcase a retail CBDC solution. And our COO, Jason Chapala, spoke on high-level CBDC panels for both the Singapore FinTech Festival and the Alliance for Financial Inclusion. We'll have a lot more CBDC-related updates and resources in the months ahead. So with that, I'll hand it back to Danelle to wrap us up before the Q&A. Danelle. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Justin. Um, I love these things. These quarterly calls are awesome because they remind me how grateful I am to be working uh, with folks at SDF because we do get a lot of work done throughout the quarters and we are really focused on our goals. So thank you to all the teams that support this and obviously to our ecosystem who supports us through it. So to wrap up, uh, I wanna say through collaboration with some exciting new partners and an incredibly engaged community, we're on track to deliver on the goals we laid out for 2021, which is awesome. Uh, we're fostering sustainable use cases as reflected by our biggest quarter, uh, the Enterprise Fund for the Enterprise Fund yet, investing in mission aligned companies like Tala and Rehive to the tune of nearly $41 million. We'll follow up in Q4 with more updates on our work with MoneyGram. Uh, we're ensure, ensuring the robustness and usability of Stellar by working hand in hand with the ecosystem on the preparations for protocol 18. If, if the network votes to accept it, this will give the ecosystem a totally new cross-currency pa payment path and democratizes market making by giving everyone the ability to participate in liquidity provision. And we're making Stellar the blockchain people know and trust by bringing visibility to those building on Stellar continuing to educate stakeholders on blockchain and crypto policy issues, and by making the case for CBDCs on Stellar. So I wanna thank you guys all for coming and I'm gonna turn this back over to Carolyn because she's gonna open up the floor to audience questions now. Thanks, Danelle. And thanks again to all of our speakers. Uh, definitely a lot of questions coming in. So um, first for Shivani, um, could you talk a little bit about the growth of the team at Tala and what role specifically you're recruiting for um, through this investment? Sure. Um, specifically on the crypto side, uh, we're really looking for great folks that can join the team on the BD side, uh, on the product side, and on the engineering side. And, you know, ideally we're looking for individuals that, you know, have some experience across our markets or more just a curiosity about the customer base that we serve. Um, and ideally we want folks that that actually have worked in kind of the analog or web 2.0 world, right? And that can then think about, okay, from a fresh perspective, how could we rebuild this? Um, so that's what we're looking for. And then across the team in general, we're, we're hiring across all of our markets. Uh, so definitely not looking at just the US team. We're open to people being uh, in Kenya and the Philippines and Mexico and India with us. Great, thank you. Um, okay, and for Danelle, um, can you talk a little bit about what's happening next with MoneyGram and when the initiative will launch? Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the pilot's gonna go live later this year and we're gonna share more about this um, at that time. We'll even talk about some of this during the Meridian conference. So I'm gonna plug that on November 17th. So be sure to register for Meridian and to, to be able to see not just our work, but the ecosystem in general. Right now, I can say that I'm just so happy to have this bridge be part, to bridge the traditional and the digital finance, the financial systems, uh, the, the real-time settlement and the back end that this will enable in terms of getting fiat currency off the blockchain nearly instantly is a remarkable development and one that we have to be grateful for. We have an awesome anchor network ourselves in terms of uh, all of these anchors that have issued assets all across the, the world and also support the on and off ramp, but now having MoneyGram be part of that network for us with their exceptionally large agent network is just a remarkable opportunity for Stellar and for all of the partners who are building on Stellar. So we're excited about the impact that this is going to have for wallet partners and 
for wallets that aren't even yet part of the network, but may join the network for this purpose. So this will open new doors and choices for people who are currently excluded from digital finance. So more to come this year and as well as next year, we're just gonna really focus on growing this relationship and improving the ecosystem and the creating those network effects that we always talk about that are really important. Awesome, thanks, Janelle. Um, and for Justin, um, someone asked, can you share a little bit about how AMMs on Stellar are different from other options out there? Yes, um, so AMMs on Stellar are interesting. I mean, I think the important, important things to keep in mind are that AMM work is currently underway, that on November 3rd, when the validators vote on whether to upgrade the network, um, if that vote goes through, all of these different partners are all these different participants out in the ecosystem who are building interfaces are prepared to launch products and that means that on day one of the network upgrade um, assuming that validators agree to upgrade the network suddenly anyone in the world will be able to participate in liquidity provision what's interesting about liquidity provision on stellar two things one stellar is really the first layer one protocol that includes amms at a fundamental level there are no smart contracts necessary. It is a simple operation. It's very straightforward to provide liquidity. And that makes it easy for all these different products to create interfaces for all these different developers to integrate AMMs into their products. And so that ability for developers to easily integrate AMMs because they're built in at the layer one level is unique for Stellar. The second important thing is that Stellar has operations called path payments that basically convert, uh, combine uh, transactions combine the transfer of currency with conversion. Those path payments are now going to execute on, on uh, liquidity pools or the DEX. They're going to look at liquidity pools or the DEX. And so what ends up happening with the liquidity pools on Stellar is that they actually facilitate cross-border payments. They are situated there to provide that liquidity in order to enhance Stellar's connection to the financial world. And that placement of AMMs in the center of cross-border payment transactions is unique to Stellar. Great overview. Thanks, Justin. Um, for Jordan, since you talked a little bit about CBDCs, um, someone asked, what's going on with Ukraine? Can you share a little bit more there? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're continuing to support Ukraine in the development of their digital economy. Um, I think probably a lot of people saw we welcomed uh, President Zelensky to the Bay Area last month, and Danelle and Jason uh, met met with him and his and his team to continue those conversations. We had an SDF delegation travel to Ukraine recently to meet with the Ministry of Digital Transformation and some other stakeholders. And so, it's really we're thrilled to be supporting our really future focused leadership, and um, um, it, it's work we are excited to keep doing. Thanks, Jordan. Um, and then for Justin, uh, Coindesk recently published an article on Stellar's academic partnerships um, with various universities. Can you briefly expound on why such partnerships are needed, uh, not just for SDF, but the ecosystem as a whole? Great question. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really exciting development and it's one we'll definitely talk about more because I think a lot of the work is gonna be happening in this quarter. But basically we actually just launched a webpage, which I'll share here in the chat. Um, we're calling this, this program to, to collaborate with universities and educational institutions, Stellar Next Gen. And I think that sort of gets at the reason why it's important, right? We at SDF want to make sure that we're cultivating the next crop of business leaders and developers who are building on blockchain and building on Stellar. And we wanna make sure that there's a chance for people not only to um, access the world's financial uh, or infrastructure by just having access to assets, but also so that developers all over the world can learn and have the tools that they need to actually participate in building on blockchain. So I think supporting educational institutions to help them teach the next generation of students is an important part of that mission. Great, thanks, Justin. I think that is all the time we have for questions, but um, thank you all so much for joining us. Watch out for the recap on SDF's blog later today. And um, that'll have a webinar recording and a link to the full uh, Q3 report. So check that out and see you next quarter. Thanks again. And thanks to all our speakers. Bye everyone.